Come on, camera. Orca Max, how's it going? Enjoying my holiday? Hell, I've enjoyed my whole long weekend. Celestial, how's it going? I went for a two hour hike today. Yesterday was my leg day. And uh, my lumbar region is a little bit tight right now. Um, there was one rep where I was repping 315 pound squats that I finished it, I'm like, ooh, I'm stiff. Like, like that, something was tender. And now I'm a little bit stiff today. Oh, I switch arm this one. Yep. I needed the day off anyways. Yeah, I, Thursday, I bruised my hand at work. I was demobbing, taking a bunch of stuff out of the vehicle, and I, I just squished my hand. So I got some inflammation and bruising. I remember, so that happened Thursday. I still played badminton after, posted a, a selfie after on Instagram. And then Friday, I was bench pressing 275 pounds, no problem. But I tried to do the tricep extensions. I couldn't do the tricep extensions because there's force on the outside of the, outside of the hand pushing in as you get the rope and as you. It was just like, oh, that just that just hurts. So, I think I want to go on the bike a little bit today. Today, I'm, I don't, today's supposed to technically be my day off, 
I've trained hard enough. But I also don't want to get my lower back stiff from just letting it sit for too long. I'm hitting my get this out here. The hike was all right. Saw a deer, saw a turtle. The turtle was hiding in its shell. Uh, I took a picture of it and then left it alone. Uh, the deer itself is too friendly with humans. There was uh, some kids going up trying to feed it, and you're not supposed to feed the deer. It's better for everybody if the deer maintain a healthy fear of humanity, but. I got, a, I got a picture of the deer from me to you guys away. That's how close to, close to the hiking path it was. Yeah, I went to the hiking path with no preparation. There is a bunch of river trails, not like really close to where I live. And I haven't visited, visited them yet. I've, I've walked everywhere but but I went to go walk to get some groceries. And then uh, I'm like, hey, let's go check what's on this side here. So I walk across the bridge. I'm like, oh, this is that uh, hiking trail I heard about. And so I just walked in. It took me two hours to find my way out. Um, I eventually ended up uh, like, okay, if I walk away from the river, I'm gonna get back to civilization. I did, and I ended up in this residential uh, neighborhood without any sidewalks, uh, followed uh, some vehicles down, trying to figure my way, like I, I knew which direction was home. Um, and I get to the end and, and the whole residential neighborhood just stopped and it led back into the hiking path. So I was like, okay, well, Arcanus, how's it going? Good morning, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, there was uh, a couple of kids with their mother trying to feed the feed the thing, and then I walked by and I got startled. And uh, they were still trying to feed it when I left. But those things are like uh, when they're not afraid of you, they, like they can they can actually attack you. They can get up on their hind legs and just start eating with their front hooves. I've watched, like I've seen that happen in, in person where a guy got beat to the ground. Like, like I'm talking like a guy who's bigger than me that just, just kept whacking him. Yeah, so today, I don't have a plan. I'm gonna probably do some arms, go on the bike a bit. I wish I turned the fan directly on me. The only place I'm getting air is on my feet. A lot of good that does for me. But uh, like my title in my stream says, I'm trying to set up uh, a partner dance stream come tonight. Like it's already, it's, all, it's already quarter to 6 p.m. Um, but I need a partner. And we'll see how long it'll go for. I'm not actually at my best to be like bouncing around too much. But uh, uh, who's that? I can't quite see the mystic sorcerer. I can't quite read from here. You have an American accent. No, I'm. Canadian, but growing up, a lot of our like TV education comes from America. So I have no idea what I picked up, but I know when I talk to people, 
started uh, typing on the keyboard, and then they and then they jumped into my stream or something later. They always seem to be surprised that I have a Canadian accent. I don't hear it, but that's the nature of accents, I guess. I'm going to stop the bike before I get too sweaty. Because once this room gets hot, there's no going back. I think my camera's barely keeping up with me today. Alright. I don't know how long it was, probably just five minutes. Because my bike is... Yeah. Growing up, we had two Canadian channels on TV. So I, I grew up with two channels, and they were both uh, like like CTV and some other farm bill channel. Um, and it had very specific good things on at very specific times. Then uh, I, in my teens, we got satellite TV right from America, and that's when uh, our lives changed. Oh, my day went great. The whole weekend went great. Friday, like Thursday, I worked 14 hours, then I played two hours of badminton. Friday, Friday I did chess with a 275 pound bench press for sets of five. Um, but I did an hour of chest hypertrophy before I even touched the bench. So my chest was already fatigued and I was, uh, I was, uh, I was feeling good. Uh, Saturday was back at Dennis. Um, I went to 400 and I, I did 455 pounds for one. Um, didn't like it. I went back to just 405. And I was doing sets of three. And uh, that was including a back row. So, so pull downs, rows. And then yesterday, I every every Sunday for the last couple months have been leg day. And Monday, I'm always a little bit sore after. It's leg day where it really takes everything out of me. And so today is just going to be light. I'm going to set up some dumbbells. I don't have any dumbbells set up as of this second. But I got my... Considering I bruised my right hand, I can feel inflammation. But nothing's broken, nothing's strained, it's just bruised. And I just bent my fingernail backwards, that was fun. Alright, let's see if I move the camera. Yes. There we go. Oh, my, my hand doesn't feel great. Uh, when I'm pulling, I, I got good grip in my fingers. It's really if I have any force on the other side of my hand. Uh, I'm not sure about really gripping anything, uh, like, like my back grips. Let me try. Yeah, there's a little bit there, but not much. I think I'll be okay.
Oh, that was that was a fun day. I went out to a Canadian pipeline, and I get to the office. I had to take some online safety course, as well as the reason why they sent me out there. We have other people who can sort of do the work, but if anything goes wrong, I can solve. I I am confident I can solve any problem, and. It turns out that that uh, ended up needing to happen for a couple of reasons. First, um, I went out there with a GPS survey, and I had to lay out. Um, I had to lay out a bunch of piles for the pipeline, and we didn't have the GPS coordinates, but we had references to other uh, landmarks on site without knowing what landmarks were actually available to access. So what I did is, is I got my coworker to put together a model of, everything, of, of all the information we had, and I would go survey something, bring a laptop with me, go take the coordinates I got with my, with my landmark, punch into our, into our model, update everything, throw everything back, throw the model back into the, onto the GPS, and then, go, and then go out there and lay out all the files. Well, first, my coworker, he uh, made a number calculation error in his model. So one grid line, everything was shifted two feet to the west. And I go out there and suddenly, like, why am I getting the pile that's supposed to be in the middle of the sidewalk? That's, so right away, the guys I was with started freaking out. But this is even before, so that, that's the model. I had, to, I had to make sure I understood what he put together and had a plan how to do it. So I got in the morning, first thing, had to take, take that safety desk, Second thing, I had to make sure I was all set up to go and had everything I needed. Got, got the laptop, got the GPS, got the vehicle. And then I get out to the site and I had to print out my safety orientation um, certificate. And for some reason, when I, when I took the test, it has to go through the internet and get sent back. Well, I followed all the on-screen instructions, but because I'm a speed reader and I read through all the instructions, I followed, it was like click, 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 and went. It, the internet didn't actually update my certificate, so it printed off with certain sections that were blank. So I went to, I got, I got there, and the safety officer, the guy who's running the site, um, essentially says, I, I can't have you on site until you get this paper for me, because uh, it, it's like this detail here isn't filled out. I'm like, well, I took the test that's got my name, it's got everything else filled out on it. I, I don't know that uh, this thing was supposed to have that this, there's supposed to be a value in here, so. I got my coworker to log into my account through the email, and he texted me the certificate, which was completed. It just hadn't been updated when I printed it. I texted the, the picture to the safety guy. He printed it off, he put it in his, he put it in his folder. I was allowed to access the site, and so uh, so I'm suddenly, 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 I started, suddenly I started going along. I'm doing doing what I'm doing. Find out that why are the piles in the middle of the sidewalk, and it's either there's an error with the drawings, um, or there's something wrong with their model. And I had like like two minutes to figure out what the error was because the guys I was with, I have to be supervised everywhere I go. They started running, grabbing all these people around the woodworks. And they were uh, like, like, there's a problem here. Come here, everybody. And so finally, I, I, I was able to quickly figure it out. I'm like, okay, not, not a problem. I fixed the problem. We're, we're, we're back on track. And I, I double-checked everything is right now, and we'll just continue. Uh, I, I told what the problem is. The grid line got moved. I moved it back. And then so we continue. And they had a built-in check where when we get around throughout the, uh, like, to the end point, that endpoint is supposed to be 4.7 meters off of a building. Well, when we got out, when we got the tape measure out, it was 4.1 meters. So there's another, there's two feet of air somewhere, and I and I, I, I went through everything, and I'm like, yes, it's the draw, your drawing has discrepancies. Um, this isn't anything to do with our model. It's just the uh, the this was an uh, issue that the, that the designer had. So they wanted me to do some quick fixes on site and like, hey, can you give us these other options and this and that. And they're also asking for a lot of stuff that they hadn't uh, asked for when they got us to set up the job. But 
I was knowledgeable enough to do that for them. But if they had another worker from our office, they, they just like, I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't come here prepared for that. I don't know what to do. But I was able to figure it all out. Yeah, I can speed read. I read, I read a lot. I love online novels because I can scroll. Did my camera go a little funky there? I can scroll as fast as I can read, basically. So I'll just keep scrolling, and the text will be like flying up the, up the, up the screen. And then for my degree, like you saw that, right? I, I leaned in, I read it, I, I'm already stalking. I, I, I like, like uh, your, uh, for, for my degree, it's uh, civil engineering, graduated like, like 10 years ago. And I spent six months working as a structural, air, as a structural engineer in training. And then now I do geotechnical engineering. So after six months, I switched from structural to geotechnical engineering. And that's where I've been ever since. But I do a lot of hydraulics, a lot of hydrology. A lot of, like I, before 2018, I used to do a lot more field work. And I would get sent to these god awful places uh, where you have to fly in, carry all your gear in a pack on your back, and be told, like get sent out there. And just like, okay, bring the equipment, uh, and then figure the rest out while you're there. You're not gonna be able to contact the office, so just 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 get it done somehow. And 2018, I I hurt into my disc and tore my glute in a workplace injury. Um, in Ontario, where the only way to get there was to take a like a like a two passenger plane, and then I was walking 15 kilometers into the swamp, and I had to crawl my way back out. That was fun. Yeah. So. After I injured myself, um, I stopped spending so much time out in the field. I got put in front of a desk the, the whole time. And honestly, it, it's I, I miss the days where I adopted my projects and my projects would take me from the office setting it up to uh, organizing with the contractors to uh, doing the, like the business side of things to going out on the site, supervising, to getting the collecting the data, bring it back to our office. Our, our office would do the testing, it wouldn't be me, but while I'm awaiting my test results, I could do like the soil logs, the drafting, the analysis, uh, the, the, the report, get my results back, fill in the fill in uh, what's, what's missing, and then uh, send off one package and uh, move on to the next, where every day was something different, but I was completing tasks every day. So I was like, I got, I got this thing to do, I do it, I complete it. Now I'm working on projects where for like two months, I'm, I'm done working on this one project. And so like one project, there's no like, like it, it takes two months to actually complete anything. Yeah, since I've been getting bigger since July, I've been getting, uh, I can, oh crap, my, there goes my camera, but I can feel my back coming in nice, my legs are coming in, in uh, like legs, it's, it's going to take me a year to get my legs where I want them to be, but uh, the one thing I'm, I, I, I've been slacking on my flexibility, so there's only so many hours, so much motivation I can do in a day. And I've been slacking on my stretching. Uh, I, I'm still doing little stretching here and there, uh, but I'm not act actively focusing on getting the splits anymore. Come on, camera. Let's see if I can switch things up. By...
Yeah, so I'm going to try to set up some partner dancing tonight. I'm out of practice, as well as uh, I'll be sticking with the dances that my partner is familiar with. All right, so I don't think that helped. Mostly I came here today, I decided to do a little bit of a workout just because just my lower back was stiff. I didn't, I didn't want to be immobile today. I just want to move my body throughout the day. I don't have to really push myself too hard. I've been doing deadlifts twice a week. Legs um, one and a half times a week. So uh, I made you laugh there, Mystics. So it is 63. Mystic Sorcerer 63. Like my monkey dancing. Yeah, so I have Sirius XM radio plugged into my car. Uh, I've had it as long as I've had the car. And there used to be uh, an add-on that you could pay a couple extra dollars a month and you get access to the, uh, the app. And I didn't want to ever bother paying for that. So I, and I, I never, like, I, I had an old phone up until about a year ago, and I recently called them uh, for uh, uh, my credit card expired. I had to update my credit card, and they're like, "Oh, by the way, do you know that you have that you have uh, the app?" I was like, "Oh, so the app is a free service now." Well, it's not a free service. It's it's added into the package that I'm already, that I've already been paying for. So now I've been going to the gym. And instead of having crappy Spotify where I get ads every once in a while, um, I've been using the Sears XM app for my workouts, and I'm I'm, I'm loving it. It's uh, the app is actually really well done. So simply 2D, how's it going? Uh, I'm feeling good. It's been a good good weekend. Tomorrow, uh, I gotta get. Hmm. I don't know how I'm gonna work out tomorrow because I'm probably gonna have to work late. Um, I might end up working till like 11 p.m. Uh, I have a job that has to be done for Wednesday. I had the option to go in today. I decided I don't want to, so I'm uh, pro I'll probably work till about 11 p.m. Come home, do a quick workout. Uh, but more focused on, I, I probably won't stream it, I, I'll probably still do it at home, I won't, I won't do it at the gym, just uh, get it done. Maybe I'll do, uh, I'll set up my bench press and do bench press for half an hour and then maybe do some push-ups, do some triceps and uh, all that. Doing good. Finished the weekend. I went. I've been working out really hard. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, went for a hike. Um, I think also Friday, Saturday. I probably went for. I, I met a friend of mine at the gym. I hadn't seen since the pandemic, and him and I went and, and, and we're talking like walking and talking for like three hours after my workout. So I get home in my, I'm, I'm feeling the walk more than my workout. But at the same time, it wasn't like, a, it wasn't like an exercise walk where if I'm walking before exercise, I'm, I'm walking hard enough that I'm engaging my core. So I'm, I'm walking so my core is engaged and, and I, I'm walking briskly. I'm not like going all out but I'm keeping my core engaged, 
and I'm actually going there. I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm exercising right now. Whereas like three hours just moving around. So today I went on a two hour hike, but my two hour hike was, I'm exercising right now, let, let's, let's go. And my walk was a little bit longer than two hours. Uh, pretty much I was just going for a walk to pick up groceries. Didn't see the need to drive. And I decided to mosey along the bridge to see what's on the other side. Found uh, a hiking trail I heard about. And I was like, okay, let, let, let's go. And then I saw a deer, saw a turtle, did some muscle ups on a swing set that I found. It was actually difficult because of how thick the swing set was. So I had a few muscle ups where I'm, where I'm hooking the bar like this and the bar is taking up my Yeah, and the biggest reason I decided to stay up there a little bit longer, I want to get rid of my farmer's tan that I got. I've been out on site more and uh, having meetings where I have to like, dress a little bit presentable but still be able to get dirty. Because uh, I, I remember uh, last week, I think it was Tuesday, I no, it might have been Tuesday. It might, it might have been Friday or a week ago. I uh, showed up to a meeting with with a client. We we're discussing what our our company can do for him. Um, as well as we we're, were gonna do some preliminary work to find out what's feasible for his property. And to do that, uh, we gotta figure, like we gotta figure out where he can put his buildings, uh, what, the, what the slopes of buildings gonna look like in the worst case scenario next to the river. And so I had a meeting with the guys. Um, we were discussing everything, social distance and all that. I was wearing my mask. And, uh, but so dress nice for the client and then he left. And then I stayed on site, grabbed the hip waders, and I just walked through the bush into the into the into the creek. Took some survey and went back to the office. Banda, how's it going? I don't know. I'm I'm a eternal procrastinator. Well, how does it go? Why do today what you can put off indefinitely? No. Uh, something like that. But I, I need more incentive to set up my affiliate. That, that's what I need. I need, I need incentive. Um, currently, I'm just happy to chat with you guys like I'm doing right now. I got the music on. I'm feeling good. I'm happy. Doing my workouts. Um, I joined. There's, there's a couple other fitness streamers that I watch. And... I don't know how he did it, but this guy like shouted, shouted me out on his channel, and on his channel it brought up a video of of uh, a clip of mine, and I didn't even realize that I had clips that like like I, I actually have access to all the clips and I can see what they are, but he pulled up a clip of mine back from January when I first started. Back when I had my long hair, that was frustrating me, and I was like, it was, it was a nice throwback where I could, like, hey, that, that's that's what I look like then. This is what I look like now, and I can definitely see the improvement from January, like steady improvement.
uh, so it's been a long time since I've regular, regularly gone on social media. Um, over the last week, I've actually been scrolling through Instagram because I've followed a couple of dance groups and um, <clears throat> as well as like the fitness stuff that I, I regularly see, but most I'll scroll through because the ads are actually interesting. I'm getting, a, I'm getting tons of dance, like harder dancing ads or like hip hop dancing ads. And I, and I, I can watch people do some amazing dancing on, on uh, Instagram uh, where it's just, there's no people bickering. It's just like an ad, someone's trying to study something, but, the, but what they're trying to, what the people are doing in, in the actual ad is, is like really, like, like really amazing. Uh, as well as I was watching this, this gymnast do some crazy flips around the bar. And I must've watched that video probably about like 30 times. I started pausing at different, at different moments, picking apart the, the moves that he's doing and sort of trying to visualize, like, if that's something I think I could do myself. So one thing the guy did is like, he's swinging forward. So he's, he's swinging, like he's, he's, his body swings all the way forward. And as he swings back, he takes his leg to his chest and, and extends, his, extends his feet through his arms. So his feet, go through his arms up here and then as he's coming back and so his feet go over the bar and then he uh, he lets go of the bar and then and then catches it like back here I thought that was really cool but like I can see the, I, can, I can see what his body is doing. I can understand where everything comes from and how he does it. But some of it is, is some of what he did was just straight muscle memory, where he would, like, like when he threw himself over top of the bar, I think I could do, I, I'm pretty sure I could do that same thing, where I could use momentum, swing forward as I'm swinging back, get my feet through, and then fling myself over top of the bar. But the way he catches it, he just knew where the bar was and where his hands had to be. And that's something, like, I would... I would fly over the bar and I would keep going <laughs> and I wouldn't be prepared to land or anything because you're traveling basically horizontal. That's uh, that's an all in committed group. Where you're like eight feet in the ground, eight, eight feet above the ground, looking for a sore bum if you're uh, if you miss. My glutes are very tight today. Like, oh, <laughs> that's that's tender. Oh, oh, I should go. I should go with my foam roller. That's what I should do. I should have done that when I started my workout. Oh, yeah. Feeling myself up right now. Feeling like where the muscles are tender. I think I'm I'm ready for another chest workout. My my chest is my chest has recovered. From my workout on Friday. Yeah, so tomorrow um, I'll try to do a chest workout after after uh, my work. Uh, so how is everybody doing tonight? Does uh, do a lot of you also have a long weekend this weekend? If you're from North America, I assume so, but what's interesting about being on Twitch, I get to interact with people from all over the world, particularly when my evenings is like somebody else's lunchtime.
I'm going to keep going until I start to feel a burn on me. <clears throat> Was that what it was? Spoopy time? Oh, I know some cheap. Yeah, I think I walked in at an awkward time or something where it was like something completely without context. Ouch! Something completely without context. I'm losing my threads on my weights. I don't want to end up dropping the thing on my foot. Yeah, I can't even remember what it was. I think it was like peeing on somebody or something. I've definitely been feeling myself get stronger since July, but inversely, I've also been feeling myself get more beat up in my workouts. Yeah. I'm going to try to set up some harder dancing tonight, but right now it's up in the air. But even if I do, it's uh, not like with my back being a little bit stiff, I, I might end up moving my partner, moving myself less. Let's see if you guys can, can see when I'm being lazy or not. Thanks for uh, chatting with me. Chad guy, 37. Yeah. I haven't even uh, taken the time to set up my affiliate. I get everything I need out of my interactions without, or with, with you guys without uh, any money needing to be exchanged, without any money needing to be exchanged yeah. 
Your rope fitness squat rack comes next week. I can't even remember the brand on my squat rack. Um, I got the best of the cheapest ones I could buy because I don't have room for a large squat rack right now. My dream, like my ideal would be like this, like a huge rack that I can do squats. Uh, I can get the safety bars on, but I can also do pull-ups on, uh, do muscle-ups on, and also have the cables where I can do my flies, uh, as well as maybe cables for the pull-out, like one big setup. Um, we have one at the gym. The thing itself weighs weighs tons, is, but uh, it's also probably double of what I would actually need. Um, because the hardest thing about working out at home is I've always done a large portion of my workouts with cables. It's just you, you hit, you flip a switch, you, you move the, you take the knob, stick your lower, add some weight. Okay, what is that? Okay, just quickly, okay, there, there. Keep adding weight or lowering weight. And you know what, like, like here, everything I do at home, I gotta take time to set up, take it apart. Echelon, how's it going? Going light today. I actually should have started with foam rolling. I actually brought in my foam roller from my living room but I forgot to use it. I did go on the bike though, get some mobility through my hips. Yeah, early stream. Uh, I might do another stream later tonight. Uh, I'm trying to set up partner dancing right now. If I, and I need a partner for that. My stats, uh, 5'11", 190 pounds, although I've actually dropped below 190 pounds just by a little bit. Um, I'll probably be back at 190 pounds in uh, a week. Um, I'm letting hunger dictate my diet right now. Just eating, but I, I like to eat, I love being full. Lots of high filling, low calorie foods, as much as I want. Um, I'm also, I turned 34 this year, back in July. I started training when I was 24, and I, I think I've gone through three iterations. Three? Well, let, let's see. So I trained for four years like a maniac. Like my first four years, like I attacked, attacked, attacked. And I got amazing results from it. I, 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 tr I started with bodybuilding, didn't like bodybuilding, tried strength training, didn't like strength training. I went, so I adapted a hybrid between bodybuilding and strength training. And that's what I did for four years. Um, then I caught Lyme disease. I, for like six months, I didn't know what was wrong with me. Maybe not six months, but once I got diagnosed, uh, like very soon, soon after I was treated and I was cured, but I lost a lot of my muscle and I started right from the ground zero all the way back up again. But I started training differently. And then 2018, I hurt in my disc, I tore my glutes and I couldn't train my leg. Like my legs shrivel up in real time every day. I watched my ass just like, like uh, shrivel up and die. Um, and in 2020, I could start training my legs again. So I started training, but uh, I was going more for strength. I was, I was big, uh, 230 pounds. And so maybe, maybe that's my, that's my third iteration was like, like the upside down bottle, right? No legs, all upper body. Um, and then 2020, I started filling out and then lockdown hit. And the first lockdown was great. I took all my workouts outside. I was, I do like pharmacaries and stuff outside with like lots of weight. Um, I did a lot of calisthenics, and then the second lockdown hit in winter, 
and I didn't train for several for several months. I dropped like 40 pounds, and then January 2021, I picked up the pieces. Now I'm just focusing on uh, uh, staying lean while building muscle. So I'm trying to build muscle progressively. And if you look at my streams back in January when I first started, uh, like one January, I was a little bit, I was a little bit weak for for how for um, what I was used to. So there's some muscle memory that bounced back. Um, but even after the initial rebound, I've still been making progressive improvements in my strength uh, while staying lean. And I'll probably continue like this until um, I, I intend to make an aggressive cut and basically become competent. Like I'm not gonna compete, but I'm planning to become competition ready. Just uh, hire a professional photographer, get the um, get some really good lighting and some uh, professional uh, pictures taken, so I can show off the like uh, show off to the kids when I'm like nine years old. Deer meat. I I saw a Bambi today. I took a picture of uh, a deer that was well, for me to you guys away. Some kids were trying to feed it with their mother supervising. Don't do that. Still a wild animal, and they should have a healthy fear of humans. It's better for everybody involved, better for the deer, better for us. I took a picture of a, a deer and of, and of a turtle today. Let's see if I can. Gallery. So there, there's Bambi. And there's the turtle hiding in its little shell. Oh. All right. So I'm working out right now, but it really, it feels like I'm relaxing. I'm not really pushing myself that hard. Just getting my body moving. Uh, I was feeling a little bit stiff. These things I find quite easy to do. You can see the striations in my chest. But um, the chair dips, easy to do. And I can keep going until you feel the, the burn build up. Get some lactic acid in there. But yeah, 190 pounds, 5 foot 11. 190 pounds ish. I'm not. I'm not weighing myself every day because I, I don't really care about my weight right now. Um, I'm focusing on just trying to build muscle uh, while staying lean. And, and not just build muscle, I'm trying to get stronger, I'm trying to improve my lifts. I got the music playing, I got you guys to talk to. It's, it's a good day. But this morning I was very, I, I was in a mood. I was in a, a very internalized mood. So like, like I was like in my own head having my thoughts, thinking about things, thinking about different topics. Uh, I started talking to my best friend again. We've been, uh, haven't really been talking so much uh, just cause like every, everything with him is, uh, he dies in all these controversial topics that just like take so much mental energy out of me, but and we can't meet anymore because he's uh, immune compromised, even though we're both um, both got our vaccines, but he still got to stay away from people for the most part. Yeah, we were, we were talking about stuff like it started 
he uh, brought up that he read that Australia was coming out with a uh, vaccine, or, or, or sorry, a, a quarantine app that uses facial recognition and uh, like, uh, like, like, as well as positioning to, to know where you are and this and that. And then he was going on into about like, like the, the terrors of having the government in your living room. And it sounds bad. Uh, then I did my own research on it. I uh, looked it up. And what it is, is um, the articles written that were against it didn't dispute any of the facts given by one, the government's own webpage, as well as the other articles that were, that were written in favor of it. But the articles against it were mostly against Australia being very restrictive in their, in, in their freedoms of their citizens, where they were restricting all travel. Right? It was like, you can't, you can't travel. And, and they were like, well, we should, like freedom and this and that, right? But, but aside from that, like the, the app in itself, one, it's a voluntary app um, that is an alternative to here in Canada. If, if you travel and you come back to Canada or you travel to Canada, you are traveling with the agreement that you come into quarantine for two weeks on your way back um, and you're sent to a hotel to, to, to keep your to spend your two weeks at your own cost which is the same thing that they were doing in Australia but now that instead of having uh, to, to be quarantined at a hotel you're traveling with your come back and you are voluntarily going into house quarantine um, but it's supervised house quarantine and then the method that they're using to supervise you is randomized uh, calls from your phone where you have to scan your face and take your location. Um, and then you have to do it within 15 minutes of them calling. So to prove that you're at home. And it's also in this trial period right now where if the trial is successful, and I imagine it will be because people are, would, would prefer to spend quarantine, like, like supervised quarantine um, at home and negate thousands of dollars in fees staying at a hotel for two weeks. And if the trial period is successful, the government's plan is to keep it is to keep it uh, uh, as a voluntary measure. And they've been pretty good with being accountable and keeping their decisions uh, open to the public. So then we, had, went, then we went into another discussion where my friend is, is actually like, so we're talking uh, so I asked him, so do you, do you think people should be um, super, like, quarantined under supervision uh, upon entering Canada or upon entering the States? And, and he doesn't, which actually surprised me because he's a big proponent of that the country should be able to allow who comes in and set rules uh, and, like, regulations for it. You come here, you got to go through this procedure to get in. Um, and as well as being able to um, prevent certain people from, from coming in if they've got like criminal behavior or, or whatnot. And to me, I see the quarantining as something very similar where you come in and follow the rules and regulations to get in and we're in the middle of a pandemic. And like, it's fine to say like, go quarantine but we know a lot of people just are going to break the rules and are going to skirt everything that they can. And by, by the time you catch them, the damage has already been done. But like what, what he, what my friends in favor of is leaving it unsupervised 
on having harsher punishments for if you break the if you break the law. And to me, that's like I can see where it comes from, but that's actually much more scary to me because like like six months in jail, this and that, like it's like especially with the way our legal system is set up. Like I, I don't want to live in a society where we're throwing more people in jail. As well as this very costly, the very costly system both. Oh. Alright. I started ranting, going off on a tangent, and uh, the dialogue between me and Chad here has died. And I just have been doing light triceps for probably 15, 20 minutes now. So let's do a little bit more. Let's try dips. See, I didn't buy this. Uh, I didn't buy these parallel bars with the intention to do dips on them, but they work really, really well for dips. I never actually. Like, I got them for uh, for doing like the planks, um, as well as several other calisthenic exercises. And it's. I, I had a setup for doing dips before, but this is so much easier. Oh, it's hot. Yeah, so uh, last time I streamed, I was looking at myself, I'm like, huh, oh, I'm getting a little bit scruffy. Maybe I should uh, shave it all off. And I got uh, feedback in the negative for that. So instead of shaving it off, I I trimmed it, cleaned it up, so now it's all the same length. And maybe I'll try to get it coming in a little bit thicker. Keep uh, maintaining it. And who knows, maybe I'll actually have a beard for a short period of time. So what do I want to keep doing tonight? So maybe I'll do some back extensions while getting some glute activation in there. Uh, my glutes are really tight right now. Just, just I can feel them. I think I might get, I might do, might do be good to get some blood flow in the area. Flex the muscle just a little bit without really straining myself. Yeah, I'm throwing some shoulders right now.
What do you, uh, you three mystic sorcerer? And how long have you been streaming for? I'll give you a follow. Click. Click. So I see some Rocket League and two other games I don't recognize. It's been uh, a fair bit since I've uh, played video games every day. I started streaming some Stardew Valley, got a lot of positive feedback from that. Yeah, I, I often roll through the fitness and health streams, like uh, Sturge Fitness and Health, and um, I don't think I've seen it pop up yet, but I find watching people rolling, like, like lifting and just, like, better themselves and, like, like doing, putting in the work, I find it makes me, it motivates me, makes me want to move my body. And often I'll, I'll watch some fitness streamers, uh, and then in turn I'll want to work out after. So it's like it's it's almost like my pre-workout. Let's see yeah, how uh, kind of to. Whoa! I almost lost control there. Let's not do that again. I'm, I'm out of practice for a lot of calisthenics things. I should actually go back to more calisthenics. I have uh, my parallel bars, I got my little parallettes. I, there's, there's a lot I can do that uh, we can get a really good exercise on and would just help me become more athletic. Um, the last couple months, though, I've just been focusing mainly on the big lifts. So I'm doing like push pull legs, push pull legs, push pull legs, rinse and repeat with uh, some uh, like saving my lighter workouts for my home workouts uh, where I'll, I'll stream. But in turn, I've been streaming less, whereas when I first started streaming in January, I stream basically every day. All right. So you're sitting like, give me a sec. I gotta tell you something. I don't know how to do a lot of settings on here. So, I don't know if I can do anything about it. It says that account is uh, suspended or deactivated. 
But no, I, I never want to do that, right? Like, I will raid basically every time because, like, for me, it's just a, I, I, it's just a click of a mouse. But you can really make somebody else's day just by uh, sending them a little bit of uh, love their way. And you never want to send, like, this happened my last time I raided. I sent uh, some viewers over, and then there was uh, one person in there who was uh, unkind to, the, to that other streamer. And, like, like that, that, that made me feel bad. I apologize for that. And I'm not going to put myself in that situation again where, like, even here, if, if, if somebody's mean to me, I don't, I don't really care about it. You can't hurt my feelings. It's just, uh, if you start upsetting other people in the chat, then you got to go. But I don't want to send, I don't want to send uh, people out there who are just getting into Twitch and uh, who are, who could do well with some encouragement. I don't want to send them any trolls, so. All right. Here's some uh, or if I should try some handstands. On the other hand, I haven't worn my wrist up, so maybe not. But uh, thanks for that heads up there, Mystic Sorcerer. I appreciate you having my best interest at heart. Let me see if I want to check this again, see if I'm able to. So I click on this name, it doesn't let me interact with it at all. Maybe I can control, maybe I'll try to do it with chat. So if I go slash, Okay, so slash. Hmm. I'm not seeing a way to kick anybody. I see block, unblock, ban. <clears throat> Let's try this. And that did nothing. I don't know. Yeah, I need to spend more time on my traps. I I actually haven't been any been spending any time on my traps really in like since 2018. Um, but I have been getting some uh, hypertrophy in them through compound lifts. 
but it's always a byproduct, uh, like like a secondary action on something else that I'm focusing on. Meanwhile, like if, if, I, if I put it in the work, like if I put lots of volume in my traps, they are going to grow. Oh, you can you can you can do that. I'm not uh, really too sure what to do as a mod, but I'll I'll try to catch your stream. It it really depends on what time of the day you're at because it is 6:50 p.m. right now. I work from eight to five. Um, typically, but for the last couple of weeks, we've been short staffed. All of our summer students have gone back to school and I'm sort of picking up some of the slack. Actually, I was gonna, okay, so after I do this next set, this set here, I am going to push myself a little bit. Every other set, as soon as it started to burn, I basically stopped. This one here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go until I start to struggle, and then I'm gonna go a couple more, and then in my next rest period, I am going to warm my wrists, and then maybe I'll try some fun stuff. So, this this band, I love it. I used to uh, I used to get dumbbells and I'd carry them with my legs, and I'd use that to add extra weight. But uh, the, the band here, it gets a little bit lighter when you're at your most compromised position. But then as you go fully up, uh, the resistance grows and grows and grows and puts it more in your triceps. So I still was going to push myself. I was ready to quit already. <clears throat> okay. Job. Oh, wait, how's it going? I got some farmer's pan in here. You can see. I don't like it. How are you doing tonight? I got uh, some nice conversation going. I got... Getting, just moving my body. I'm not really trying to push myself that hard. Had a good weekend. I got to get the last little bit of energy out of me before I start the next week. I got good music in the background that you guys can hear. My system automatically filters it out so I can listen to uh, copyright music without... Uh, any strikes against me. Ah. Well, it takes time. Um, but pretty like like everybody can get a lot more fit and swole than they think they can. Um, like like for myself, I'll never be like the high end professional bodybuilders, not even the high end natural professional bodybuilders. But uh, like like for the, for the average person, it takes four years to uh, to hit uh, near your peak but your, your peak physical potential, and that's four years of training hard and doing things properly and being efficient. Whereas uh, every little step you take in the right direction will get you just a, a little bit more uh, reward at the end. All right, so the Y is silent in the word Marland. Well, feel free to take away. 
Um, it's always like my best moments of streaming so far have been hearing about other people's progresses, progress uh, towards betting themselves over the uh, o over the months. There was one time I was like my first video game stream. I played Resident Evil 7, and I met uh, a viewer who is a big Resident Evil fan like myself, and so he followed me, and we were chatting, and we were talking about fitness, and uh, so I started giving advice, and the guy's making like massive positive changes in his life that it's not like 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 to, to his health, like his his quality of life is is, is, is going to be going up with uh, with all the positive influences he's he's made, and he's putting the work and he's getting the results. He's having hiccups here and there, but I'm um, trying to keep up. Like, like, uh, like, you don't need to be as efficient as possible. It's also important to be happy, right? So it's it's a it's a trade off, right? Like, you can train like an absolute madman, but if you're miserable, is it worth it? As well as, like, muscles are great and all, but uh, a little bit of cardio and just burning off belly fat will go a lot longer towards improving your health and into improving your quality of life. So cardio, you're, you're training the most important muscle, which is your heart. And then um, for trimming, like if you want to lose fat, it's entirely up to being in a calorie deficit. You have to burn more than you consume, and you can do that entirely in the kitchen if you want, but you're going to be healthier if you throw in some cardio in there and have a healthy heart. Yeah, but uh, my recommendations would be uh, you like it's the lifestyle that you live which is going to get you the body that you want, and the way to go about it is to set the path in front of you so that it is as easy as possible to take every step. You take one step at a time, but you lay it out in front of you. So, like if you're suffering and if you're not enjoying it, it's, it's you're not going to want to continue. You're not going to want to show up every day. And it's like when you start off, like you start off, don't go 100% out the gate right at the start. You'll get burnout. It's consistency. It's how much you do over a week, over a month, over six months, over a year, over four years. And uh, even when it comes to like people who are overweight, they have a higher, they're able to go into a higher calorie deficit. And so they're able to burn off more weight at a time. But often you're better served losing a smaller amount of weight consistently because then you don't suffer. Like you can not, you can maintain your, your, uh, your, you can maintain a diet where you're, where you don't go hungry, where you don't feel hungry, but you can still burn a little bit of weight. And if you're burning like 30, 40 pounds a year, like, like four years, that's you're, like two years, one year, you can be a whole different you. You don't need to burn 30 pounds in, a, in two months and then suffer and then figure that and then determine I've suffered enough. And so I'm gonna go back to, like I had this diet, this, I finished my diet, I hit my weight, now I'm gonna go back to eating how I used to, but how you ate how you used to got you the body that you originally had that you didn't want. There's 3.5 miles in cardio yesterday. Yep. I love fitness, you get the, the natural high every day. Um, it, does, it does wonders for your mental health, it does wonders for your self-esteem. And, and not so much like everybody can be self-conscious about how they look like here and there. Like I, I see things on myself that I don't like. I see things that I like, like my legs. I used to have really nice legs, had some injuries. Uh, now I'm working from the ground up again. But even like, I'm not talking to myself, like, like you see things you don't like, but you train, you get a sense of accomplishment. And uh, you give yourself a nice pat on the back after. And uh, you go to sleep feeling good about yourself. You want to hit the gym today? <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the good show, huh? Or maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't uh, assume that, but... Yeah, because even myself, um, I had to work. My preferred training method is five days on, one day off. Five days on, one day off. That's my preferred training method. Focusing something similar to push-pull legs, push-pull legs. Similar to that, but not quite, because I'm doing a hybrid of, of, of some stuff. But 
Um, let me, let me. But I had to work up there. So when it started, three days was, was difficult for me. Training three days a week, was, like, I, like I wasn't recovering. And if you want to build muscle, uh, it comes, there's two things, well, I guess three things for, for muscle. First, you need hypertrophy, which means you have to train the muscle near failure. You have to get the muscle to a point where like hypertrophy, hypertrophy is the stimulus for muscle growth. That's where you're training until the muscle realizes it's not quite up to the task. And, but just a little bit. So it, it's, it thinks to itself, okay, I'm, I'm not strong enough today, but I'm gonna build, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tore down, I'm gonna build back up just a little bit stronger for next time, and next time I'll be able to do the task. And then you set yourself these little goals, and as you, you, you hit these little goals, your muscle gets stronger, so you have to, you have to try harder to, to hit hypertrophy. And so hypertrophy, which is just training hard, the second part is uh, volume of hypertrophy, but that is also tied, that, that, that is also recovery. So the more, um, so the more volume of hypertrophy that you get in over a month, over six months, over a year, the bigger your muscles are gonna grow, um, but you need to recover. So you, you tear down the muscle and then you recover, and as soon as the muscle recovers, you can do it again, all right? If, if you're uh, training before, like if you're hitting, trying to hit hypertrophy again before you recover, you're not gonna hit true hypertrophy, and it's just gonna be a little bit inefficient. So you need to recover. And how many times to train something a week? It depends on how hard you're training and how well you're recovering. Um, so if the most efficient way to build muscle is to train the muscle group two to three times a week. That's the most efficient. If you want the maximum size growth, um, but the science doesn't know whether it's two or whether it's three because it comes down to how hard you train per session as well as uh, how you are recovering. So if I train really hard and I like I train my legs really, really, really hard, really, really hard and I'm sore until like I train them on a Sunday and I'm sore until Saturday and then finally on next Sunday I can train my legs again. I have trained my legs too hard. I like, like at, to be as most efficient as possible, you train your legs so you're, you're sore, you're tender, but uh, like, like three or four days later, you're fully recovered and you can train them again. And if you, if you don't train as hard, you might have to do three times a week to get the maximum growth, or you can go two times a week. But at the same time, you don't need to hit the maximum growth. You don't need to be as efficient as possible. Any progress, like every step you make towards improving yourself is going to get you the appropriate results. And you don't necessarily need to, like you might not uh, be happy being sore all the time and really pushing yourself. Uh, because it might take four years of you know, like beating yourself up to get to a, a, to become a professional bodybuilder if you have the genetics for it, but uh, like it, that might not be worth it for you. Whereas other people, like once you got it, it's easier to maintain. It's, easy, it's easier to maintain muscle than it, than it is to uh, than to build more. <clears throat> to, to maintain muscle, all you have to do is regularly use it. No, you wanna you wanna send your your biddies out. Um, there's a lot of people out here who are very hopeful for Twitch, um, especially with the pandemic where it shut a lot of people's lives down. And there's a lot of people out there who are like really hoping that Twitch that they can make it on Twitch and they it can they can supplement their income and maybe make their lives a little bit better. And that's not me. And I would prefer that all the money that goes into Twitch goes to the, the people who uh, it would make a who, who would make a difference for. That's that's sort of that's sort of my my thoughts on it. I'm an engineer. I don't have student loans. I don't have debt. I'm uh, saving to to buy a house. I've. Uh, the pandemic's been hard, but at the same time, <clears throat> I'm very good at my job and what I do. <clears throat> and I, 
I'm very employable, I should say. And if, say, I lost all my employment opportunities, I would be able to make my own. Um, I originally was planning to go into business uh, after graduating high school. I was either going to go into like business or I was going to become an electrician's apprentice. And my family hadn't had anybody who graduated university. And so they really pushed me to go to university. So, okay, I'll do business. But at the same time, my family sort of talked me out of it. And they were thinking, like, if, as an engineer, like, business is hard and there's a lot of competition. Whereas, like, as an engineer, like, you, you, you become, you can either specialize or you can become a jack of all trades. But uh, you'll always be, you'll, you'll always have opportunities out there. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I, I didn't care one way or, or the other. I was just happy to be out of the house. I was uh, happy to like live the university life for a while. And I let myself get pushed by the waves until I I graduated. Then I started, I, I never lived in a wait until after I graduated uh, high school. So before I do the set, I'll show you guys something. I have my, I have my pre-workout um, picture here. This is this is me at 24. So I started training when I was 24 years old, and that's me. I was 140 to 145 pounds from when I was uh, basically 16 to 24. The woman in the yellow was my Japanese girlfriend. I dated her for like eight years. <clears throat> So, am I able to zoom in? How do I zoom in? I don't think I can zoom in, but let's get rid of this. Yeah, so right now, I am 34 years old. I, uh, I remember when I first started training, I thought 30 was old. I thought, I'm going to train for six years. I'm going to hit 30. I'm going to be too old to train. And then 30 came, well, actually 28 came and I was in the best shape of my life. But then 30 came and I was still making improvements. Um, yeah, I wore that cap everywhere uh, to the point where I think I still have it as a memento. I keep, I have a, I have a box of mementos, like um, things that have meant something to me in my life. And the thing is basically falling apart. Yeah, it's uh, like with with men, um, like hor like hormones start to play a bigger effect once you're in your 40s and later. But even in your 40s, if you're if you're still training, uh, like you can still have uh, you can still get to something like uh, what's what's the guy's name? Um, Athlean X, right? Athlean X is probably like. 46, claims to be natural. I believe him. He's, he's, he's strong, he's lean. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's in his 40s. If he was doing what he's doing now, in his, like, like when he was like 28, he would just be a little bit better, right? But you look at him, he's got an amazing body for like 45 years old. And I'm talking, he's got a better body than I do, because he's still putting in the training but his hormones are definitely affecting him somehow. So maybe he's just not as good. Like maybe, maybe he's not, he can't hold as much mass as he could when he was uh, like, like at, now that he's 45 as, the, as opposed to when he's uh, like 28. And maybe certain things are shaped a little bit differently, but he still looks amazing, right? And, and like, if you, if you keep training, he's, he, he, can look, I mean, he can look really good. But I, I know guys uh, at the gym who were, uh, like in their 70s, and look look amazing, right? Like they they look they look good both with and without a shirt on, and they just they just train like they they just are they just live active lifestyles. Living an active lifestyle does wonders. It's that's the same reason why you go to like in places like Japan. There's the stereotypical trope where you look at our elderly, right? Our elderly are uh, 
face they face a lot they statistically they face a lot more um, body and health issues and mobility issues um, to where you're like people in the 70s like all oh, my pains and um, meanwhile you get people like the trope is in Japan they're they're like the same age until they're like 80 and then all of a sudden they age really rapidly uh, but even then you get them in their 90s and it's just living an active lifestyle of like they're doing tai chi everything tai chi every morning and just just being active and it keeps you young for a lot longer uh, the most effective way to uh maintain a high quality uh, lifestyle is just, just to be active like you don't need to break your body down you don't need to tear yourself down and push push too hard but like just just being active um regularly keeps the body young you don't want to injure yourself though that's uh the number one thing when people start out particularly you want to build a lot of muscle you're going to build a lot more muscle when you're healthy than when you're injured so there's a lot of programs out there that you can choose from like there's a lot of good programs, push pull, like mine, push pull legs, um, but uh, you can focus more on bodybuilding, uh, which is hypertrophy, strength training, which is more training the nervous system, mixture of both. But my recommendation to somebody starting off, rather than focusing on the program, focus on the exercises themselves and learn the exercises. Learn the exercises, learn how to protect your shoulders, protect your joints, if you're in cables, you never want to like come back and, and let loose because you can really damage your shoulder that way. You want you, you don't want to be pushing and grinding your shoulders, like you're grinding through your joints. Your body will buckle to get the weight up, and that's just hard on the joints. Be, be kind to your joints. Learn how to activate the muscle. You want to do a bicep curl, learn how to get that mind muscle connection. Learn how to lift, how to squeeze the muscle to lift the weights. The muscle doesn't know how much weight you're lifting. It just knows what it's resisting. And so my recommendation is learn the exercises. Uh, like compound lifts are great. Compound lifts are how you become more efficient. You train more multiple muscle groups at once. Learn the compound lifts. Learn how to get yourself getting really good at them. Um, squats. Um, uh, deadlifts are great, uh, but a lot of technique involved. You're not just wanna, you're not just wanna gonna go and try it. You're, you, you should do your research first and when you do try it, lower weights, get, get, get a camera on you if, if you can, watch your form, compare it to uh, YouTube videos if that's all you got. If you're, if you're going to the gym, get uh, an instructor to come by and critique your form. Even after years, I will still regularly get the, the gym fitness instructors to critique my form. It's like, I haven't done this lift in like four months. Can you come, like, and I'm doing it, something's not, it's like 95% there, but I'm feeling like there's 5% I'm missing. Can you come in and sort of, See if you can give me any advice. And people are happy to help me out. And then once you've got the once you learned the different lifts, you can make a program out of those lifts. You can like you, you learn the good body mechanics, you learn how to keep like a neutral spine, how to protect your lower back, how to protect your discs. Um, and uh, then you, you uh, make a program and then focus on progressive overload or other, like, like however you're going to um, progress your workouts over time. Well, um, you can get a lot out of with limited equipment, squats, pull-ups, and dips, like, and, and, if, and, and if you don't have access to bench press, you can do you can do push-ups and stuff. Like that's uh, like those those main those main lifts. With, without anything else, you can build a really nice body. Um, if you're doing pull-ups, you might want to switch your, your your grips on your hands every once in a while, change the exercise. Like you can like what. Well, when I go for volume on pull-ups, I, I might switch my grip, so I might go the standard grip, like standard neutral grip, and then I might switch to, no, standard grip, neutral grip, 
Uh, then I might even do some chin-ups. Just uh, get, get more volume in. And chin-ups are a lot more bicep, but you still hit parts of your back. I do, I'll do uh, I'll do rows on this. Uh, if you have two chairs, you stick a. No, I want it this way. So you stick a chair, you stick a chair, and you grab a broom or something, and stick the broom across across the two chairs. You can grab the broom and do rows. Um, I just want to, I, I like to elevate my feet, so I'm going to do it while I elevate my feet. You don't have to, you can start with your feet on the ground, and I've killed my camera, but I'm just going to keep going. So, really, your feet on the ground, and, but instead of grabbing the, the sides, you, you grab a pole here, and you can, you can change the width of the grip by moving the chairs farther away from you. And you can get some good rolls in here. Right? But, okay, let's see if I can fix my camera. Um, like, like you can do uh, standing barbell rolls if you get yourself a barbell. Rebar 9, how's it going? You caught me when my I, I, I laid on the ground and my camera decided uh, if, it decided hey it looks like you're sleeping so I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, but standing barbell rows, right? Most people you'll see them they'll do their standing barbell rows like this. This is inefficient. You want to do standing barbell rows? Get over it. Turn turn it actually into a row. Don't turn it into some like weird upright. Actually, get the hamstrings nice and tight, get the back flat, engage. Like you can even see my, my lat is already engaged right now. And, and row. Well, you'll be able to lift a lot more weight when you're more upright, but you're missing the best part of why you want to do a row. And like, like I keep saying, your, your body, your muscles, don't know how much weight you're lifting. It just knows what it's resisting. So like, if you're really squeezing, you can, like, you, can get a, you can get ripped just by flexing every day. So most professional bodybuilders don't even train their abs. They just flex until it hurts. Like they just flex. And I can flex until I cram. Oh, you see I'm getting red? Ah! Whew. Oh. See? I can flex my muscles till they cramp. Whew, that winged me. But like you can give me a bigger bicep just by flexing and squeezing all the time. But uh, at a certain point it gets harder and harder to do, so weights are just easier weights. You can load the muscles more efficient. Yeah, yeah, bending over the bench is great too. Yeah, that, and, and what the bending over the bench will do, it'll support your, like, it'll support you, and, and you're actually less injury prone. So, that, 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 that's, that's why, uh, like, seated rows where you're, where you're, you're, like, sort of wrapped into the, into the bench, like, it can be seated where you're, you're going forward. Often you can actually really put the, like, transfer all the stresses directly to your back. Without having, um, without being limited by your core, without being limited by your flexibility, without being limited by your lower back, without having to worry. And like, it's good to, like, with doing compound lifts, you're going to build a better core. So most of my core isn't from doing ab exercises; it's from doing compound lifts and maybe doing some calisthenics. 
And my core is really strong. I can do like human flag, no problem. Um, but um, if you're doing some rows and if you're doing some heavy weights, say you buckle, let's say, say you're pushing too hard and something happens and you slip, you can injure yourself if you're not careful. So always be careful, don't get distracted by what's going on across the gym. The girl walking uh, by you in the short skirt. <clears throat> You, you know, like it takes one second and you can be hurt. So keep your mind on what you're doing. And that's why I recommend like uh, learn the exercises and, and make and engrave them in your body so that your body can just like, like your body just knows how to protect itself. Um, and some people like, like, okay, before the pandemic, I was training this couple at the gym. There was this, uh, the, the guy, he's uh, at the time I was 230 pounds. The other guy was like 215 pounds, the same height as me. Um, and the girl was this tiny five foot, five foot thing. And she was a savant. Like she was the most, she was a genius at the gym. Like she just, she would watch me do something and she could do it like that. She understood intuitively how to protect everything in her body. So meanwhile, her boyfriend was like falling all over himself because he had spent months already at the gym just training himself, just, just doing things. And he had all these faulty motor patterns. And I had to get all that out of him. I had to untrain all the, all the, like the faults he had made muscle memory. And he, like, he had no muscle awareness. He had no awareness how to, how to protect himself. He just wanted to lift heavier and heavier weights. So he to, to lift the heavier weights, he would buckle and get over to like, like you want to do some tricep extensions while well, he's getting his weight over and like he just wants to get it down. He doesn't care like what he's doing with his body, whether he's grinding his joints. And so this guy was terrifying me. So I was spending all my attention on him. But but the woman, like like I would she watch me do it. I I keep her out of the corner of my eye, and I was just telling her when to stop. So she would just keep doing the exercise until I would start to watch her start to strain, and and I I I'd start and before she could buckle, I'd cut her off, and or maybe say okay one 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 more and, and you're done. And then like good, good, good job, but like, she just understood how to like roast. Like I, like it was, it was amazing. Meanwhile, her her boyfriend, who was the guy who was already at the gym for a while, and wanted to show off to his girlfriend. Like, like I had to spend all, like, I, I had to really pay attention to him because he was always one step away from hurting himself. And and then now the guy is 230 pounds, and he's and he he's benching. Uh, I think 275 pounds. So like the, like over the pandemic, like the guy is the guy is strong now, and he's got good form and good lifts. So he's yeah. All right. So I've, I've been chatting and moving. Um, I think I'm gonna do one more set of dips. It's getting hot in here. I'm still hoping to set up a partner dancing stream later tonight. We'll see what happens or not. Uh, I'll have to go go shower. Probably probably dress up. If it doesn't happen tonight, I'll try to get it to happen sometime soon. I have no idea what it looks like from back there. I always gotta check it later. And I think my, oh, I, I don't know. I think my camera went over there. I'm trying to show off striations and stuff and my camera can't handle it. Yeah, for partner dancing, you need somebody else as well as somebody else who's uh, willing to be on stream. I actually did one a while ago but it didn't get good reception um, for a couple of reasons. First, her and I were dancing. We were looking at chat. And then when we did take breaks in between chatting and took a look at chat, there was no moderation taking place. And a whole bunch of people came in and were saying a lot of not very nice things. And if you say about me, I don't care, right? Like, whatever. 
But at the same time, like the person I'm dancing with, I want them to enjoy the experience. I don't want them to have to see all that crap. So uh, they're like, hey, can I see a chat? Nope, sorry. There, there's no chat. What are you talking about? Um, but, uh, cool. I'm, I'm probably a little bit out of practice. Um, as well as uh, what type of dancing I'll actually do largely depends on the partner. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, we'll take a few minutes just to talk with people and see if there's anybody willing to be a mod. But at the same time, I never expect anyone to stick around for like a whole workout or a whole uh, Twitch session. Um, I'm happy just for people to, to jump in, chat with me, and uh, just enjoy this day with me. No pressure for anyone to take on any responsibilities on my behalf. Oh. All right, so let's, let's do some more charity. Just because I don't really want to push myself too hard today. And chair dips are something that uh, you get a lot of volume in until it starts to burn. Um, so I turned 24, graduated university, and in my mind, I wanted to become a professional. Um, I started taking <clears throat> cooking classes. I started taking Taekwondo. Um, I got myself ranked seventh in my province for badminton. Um, and then I started partner dancing. And in my mind, I was thinking suit and tie, ballroom style, but I didn't know where to take any of those classes. But in my university, I knew people who were in the swing dancing club. So I typed it, typed it in Google and for swing dancing, they had a free uh, lesson and then open dance every Saturday. And it, w it turned out to be a bad idea to have three lessons and three dances because it devalued swing dancing in my city. So people felt like it should be free. And then once we had to start paying for a venue and there was costs associated with it, uh, we lost a lot of members. Um, but so I started with swing dancing. That's, that's like the, the Charleston, the, the Jive, the Lindy Hop, um, the Balboa. And then I moved on to blues, um, then West Coast. West Coast originated from swing dancing, but um, it, it evolved with current music. And currently nothing dances better to like, like your pop music or anything that you count one, two, three, four to than, uh, than West Coast. Uh, I got into the, the ballroom dances a little bit, um, the, the Latin dances, salsa, bachata. Um, then there's uh, like kazumba. There's a couple other miscellaneous dances I can do, like like nightclub two-step. Nightclub two-step is very different from the country two-step. Um, like country two-step, all you need to know is step, or slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick. Every every time I say a beat, that's uh, a step. Whereas nightclub two step is the most comfortable dance for slow music. It's like back step slide, back step slide, and uh, the connection where you, you back step away from each other. It's just very comfortable and it, it just dances very well to slow music. So, are you saying you're on the West Coast, or are you saying that you actually you actually know what West Coast swing dancing is? Because like I could spend my entire day watching like the, the great West Coast swing dancers just dance. Like it's something I can, I'll never get sick of watching because it it gives you such a good structure to actually hit the music, and the way it's set up is you take a you take one lesson. And you can you can dance with anybody. So you can get somebody who's danced for five years, dance with somebody who's on their very first dance, and both dancers can get something out of the dance, and it can be enjoyable for both. 
because there's a lot of time in between the actual leads for each person to uh, communicate what they're hearing with the music. And there's a lot of technique that you can learn and um, the, the sky's the limit. There's no limit for how good you can get at West Coast Swing. So West Coast Swing, I'm gonna get rid of this here. The basics are is the reason why you're able to take a lesson and then dance it, I'm here, my follows in front of me. As a lead, I get out of the way, my follow walks past me, I get back in the way. So we're like on a line. I get back, I get out of the way, my follow walks past me, I get back in the way, and then there's moves you can do as they're walking, and then there's uh, a whole bunch of stuff that goes on in the meantime. And it can get very, very technical where there's a lot that goes on in a very short period of time. And but for me, my I'm, I'm out of water, guys. That's the last amount of water. <laughs> yeah, for myself, I had never ever expected myself to get into dancing. I never expected to uh, like it as much as I did. And now I'm at a point where I can't go out, I can't go without it. Like for the rest of my life, I'm gonna be hearing music, I'm gonna wanna move my body. Hit the, you get the salsa songs, wanna move the hips. You get the, the beat songs, you wanna just... Right now I don't, I don't actually have music on, there's an ad. So I'm just faking it just... Okay, one ad to another ad. Damn Spotify. But I can always choose to pay for it. I'm just I'm just cheap. Um, I've always been meaning to relearn the Michael Jackson's driller choreography. I have several uh, video lessons saved. But uh, I've always found, like, I, I definitely don't like choreography that much, but choreography, like, for, for leading and following, it can really help uh, polish what you're able to do. Because even though, like, harder dancing is choreographed, it only works if it's led and followed. And you can do some amazing things because you, you both are ready for what's going on and you learn the specific moves themselves really, really well. I got blues playing now. Well, since I've been, since January, since I started streaming, I'm streaming my workouts, I've been just moving my body whenever I feel like it. And it's getting harder to go to the gym and hold that in, right? Because I don't want to be the guy at the gym who's just there like, yeah, let's go, right? And distracting other people from their workouts. But I'll still get some little, I'll get some little foot stuff in when no one's watching. And I'll, I'll, I'll be more subtle with my movements. So I might just like, so, so, so you don't really notice that uh, it looks more like I'm shifting, like moving the weights around, but really I'm just like. Yeah, for myself, <clears throat> I find what's good recovery after a workout, uh, like, like a particular leg workout, go on the bike, don't uh, have much resistance, just pump blood into the area, right? So just like, like, like for the legs, just get the, get the muscles moving 
but not really resisting anything, but just, just moving, opening and closing, rubbing against each other, getting blood in the area. And that, that'll help prevent uh, you from being sore the next day. <clears throat> as well as I'll be working out and like my shoulders, I, I, I keep my mobility. My, my, my mobility is important to me. So I wanna make sure I can still get my arms up nice and high. A lot of people who work out <clears throat> fall into a pit trap of focusing mostly on a push type exercise and not doing enough pulling exercises and you overdevelop the pushing muscles which which pull on the pulling muscles and it can like round your shoulders and you can like reduce the mobility you get in your shoulders so you can't get up. Um, yeah. I think I'm going to finish. See how, see how my splits have gone. I haven't trained any splits really in like a month or two. Um, yeah, a couple months ago I was training for the splits and then I injured myself, like I, I hurt my hip at work and it was still winter. And I stopped training it. Yeah, this isn't this isn't great. My hip flexor is holding me back. This side is going to be worse because this hip flexor is going to prevent me from going down. Whereas when I like hamstring is fine, I'm on the wrong I'm on the wrong angle. I can't get my foot in. Yeah, see my hip flexor isn't going down. Yeah, what's funny about stretching is you know how when you first start stretching something like this, it's just all pain? Well, the pain doesn't ever actually stop. What happens is how your body interprets those pain signals, right? So like people are like, oh, it feels so good to stretch. Yeah, well, to other people, it's, it's just pain. Well, you're, you're still feeling that pain. It's just your body starts to attribute those to good feelings. Yeah, see, like, I'm going to full roll while I'm down here. But uh, you'll never go wrong with... Uh, mobility exercises and, and just moving your body within your range of motion, right? Like there's there's a lot of things that can go on on why things are tight, right? Like 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 if, if they're stiff, sometimes it's protecting an injury. Sometimes you're stiff for a reason, and if you loosen that up, suddenly uh, something else is vulnerable. And I'm not saying like that might not even be the case most of the time, but sometimes that can be the case, and. I don't want to give you uh, advice that you should be getting from your physiotherapist, um, but for the most part, if you move within your range of motion, if there's pain, stop, right? Don't, don't, move, don't move through the pain. That'll, like, if this is all you can do, if you, if you regularly do this, you're going to find you're going to get hot, hot, you're going to get improvement over time until, hey, look, now my, I got good rotation through my shoulders. Long stretches are sort of where you settle into where into rigidity, and there's times for that and times that you shouldn't do that. Um, you shouldn't do long stretches before you work out because that's going to change your body's motor pattern during the lift. So if you're doing a deadlift, right, like. Like, think, think of a squat, right? A, like, a squat movement is basically you pick something up off the ground. Your body doesn't think, okay, fire the, like, the hamstrings have to be this tight, the, and, and then they, they, they move in conjunction with the glutes that fire at this moment, and then your quads get, like, your body doesn't think that. Your body just thinks, this is a movement pattern, bend down, pick this thing up off the floor. Well, the same thing happens, you, you learn the motor patterns for something like a squat or a deadlift, but if you've uh, suddenly done long static stretches on your hamstrings, 
your hamstrings aren't going to react, like they're going to be looser than your body is, uh, than your body knows them to be during that motor pattern. So it's going to mess up the motor pattern and then everything else is going to sort of fall out of place. So it's, uh, you want to do long stretches? I, I like doing long stretches before bed. Uh, I might stick my feet up the wall um, or, uh, yeah, so like yesterday I did a leg workout and I got, I, I, I did a little bit of a walk after my leg workout and then I, I went home, I, I laid on the ground, I did long stretches where I, because my lower back was stiff, I just did twists, I just laid there for a while, twist the other side, lay there for a while, um, stretch my glutes out, and I just, I sat there and put on a YouTube video and just, you guys can't see it, but, right, so, just stay for a bit, and I, and I play around, move a little bit in the, the movement, just try to, and then in the end, I just stuck my feet up the wall for a bit, and then I went to sleep for 10 minutes, took a 10 minute nap, woke up, and, uh, Bulldog, 1992, how's it going? I'm about to finish my workout here, I just want to go on the foam roller for a bit, I just, uh, unfortunately, my camera doesn't like when I move around too much. Normally when it's like this, it takes on my callus is really nice. There we go. Oh, oh it's, I got a good song going on right now. It's a good slow dance song. It's getting really hot in here and I'm out of water. I can uh, sometimes fall asleep on this, I'll just lay on it. And then eventually when I start getting tired, I just sort of roll down. It's a nice pillow. I can just finish my stretch, just lay on the floor and just let everything go. How's it going, Bulldog? Oh, there's a tender spot. My rear delts are tight. Oh, yeah. Right there. The foam roller, the foam roller you can really find your own spots. Oh. And then, just like now, just let go. I can feel it let go, and now there's no more pain to roll over it. Now I'll get more on the lat. Right there. Yeah, one thing I like about being fit, having control of my body like that, right? Like I'm just doing whatever I like. I, I can move my body around. I'm I've got a healthy body. So 2018, when I herniated my disc, I couldn't do stuff like that. I couldn't move myself around. Everything I did was all like, like getting up. I had to learn how to get up out of bed, right? Like how to swing the legs and how to do everything to avoid the pain. I had to like getting up like this, and I was like grabbing things and trying to like get my feet underneath me, like all on my back, right? It's like, I, I've been there. That's no fun. And if you got physiotherapy, you got to actually do the exercises to get the results. Ah, there's a spot.
Yeah, so maybe in an hour, maybe an hour and a half, if I can, I'll be back streaming partner dancing. Don't know how long I'll go for. I might, I feel like I might be a little bit lazy in my dancing just because I'm a little bit stiff. As well as dancing on carpet makes everything a little bit more laborious. Yeah, there's a couple of things I'm looking for if I buy a house. One, I want carpet on a room in, on the second story where I can lay down, do all my stretching, maybe even take a nap from time to time. And I want uh, nice hardwood floors to dance on. So I want, I want dancing space as well. All right, let's hit my quads and then Yeah, when I when I heard it in my disc, I space I pretty much spent a year sleeping on the floor. And I got used to literally just be able to lay down and sleep anywhere. But um, if you're on the ground floor, the uh, the ground itself, the earth, will soak the heat up and there will always be an energy transfer from you to the ground. And so basically it's always cold. All right. Um. When you sleep on the floor, whatever is in contact with the floor hurts. Like if you got a, you got a hard floor, your bones actually hurt. And uh, like like sometimes you get a little bit stiff, but you get used to it. And it, it beats all the for me it beat every alternative. I could I could sleep without with minimal pain. And when I would sleep, I'd be on my back and I would not move. So for a year, I slept like a vampire on a, like in a coffin. I just, I just, this is how I slept. I wouldn't move all night, right? Because as soon as I start to move, the pain would be so bad it would wake me up. Yeah, there's a, there's a big philosophy that that's a, like a big fitness whole philosophy that a lot of people abide by uh, with being grounded to the earth and like, like when you're pressing you, you like you, you feel like feel the ground and and, and press on like like there's and a lot of things like even if they're placebos if you think that they work you're likely to get a uh, positive benefit out of them it's like i think it works so it works and uh <clears throat> all right so let's Close down Spotify and see who uh, I can raid right now. If he is on, I'll raid her. No, uh, I will find somebody new who looks like they're putting in some good work. I will. This this guy's this guy's uh, got a interesting gym here. I will send you his. his let me let me make sure this is English first. All right, it is. So I will send you to this guy here. What's uh what's Uber shouts? I I don't know what a lot of things are. Here we go. I'll, this this guy looks like he's putting in good work. He's got a 
little brick castle he's working in. A little, 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 uh, little hidey hole. Doing uh, what he can with what he has. Just like, just like all of us. Just some last minute flexing for you guys. All right. Thank you, everybody. You still here? Have a great night. Uh, maybe I'll see you tonight. Maybe I won't. But if it's not tonight, it'll be sometime soon. Bye, everybody.